Hello, Trisha Bell, and today um, I'm just going to go glaze over the um, card events. Just wanted to explain and give some tips because I've been getting a lot of questions on the Discord. So for starters, this is the card shop. This event was also back in Minestrone, so if you started the event back then, you will still have all the same progress. Um, but they do have some new cards. So for example, um, these Pioneer packs and these uh, Everyday packs. Um, but if you press this uh, magnifying glass, you'll be able to see all the rates and all the types of cards. And then, um, you know, use Obsidian from your battles to uh, get those. These are called the Exchange battle cards and um, basically if you have a magic powder from either getting duplicates of cards that you already have or getting them from also the uh, what's it called the challenges for the NPCs um, you'll be able to buy you know just regular battle cards so that's the card shop that's how you're gonna get most of your cards um, but then for the card book this is where the rewards come in so if you notice um, if you get all these cards um, these are gray because I don't have them yet you'll be able to get these rewards and then the rewards include cards obsidian um, and I think, are there new rewards yet for the new cards? Okay, I think there are. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. So the new rewards and the new cards have already come out. So there you have Milk Tea and Chiffon Cake that'll come soon. Um, and the third Annie, which is right around the corner. Um, and then we also have Turdurkin. And then we have a lot of other, um, basically, rewards. Um, and then I think the final rewards are just Embers, right? Yeah, so just 1.5k. Now for the actual card fighting. Okay, so the NPCs are where you're gonna be doing a bunch of grinding for a bunch of resources to get your cards. And I'll quickly go over it. So is gonna be your easiest one. Literally all you need are just high level cards. Basically, um, every card has four sides that are open to see other cards. So for example, this, uh, what's it called? Waffle, right? Yeah, so this waffle has a five, two, and a four on her left, top, and right side um, accordingly. Um, so when I placed my um, Sanma on the right, my Sanma's eight, do you see how the, the eight juts on, on the right? The, my son was 8, saw the waffles 5, okay? So the 8 was greater than the 5, so it turned it over. Now, what my opponent did was that it put Macaron there. And so Macaron has a 3 on the bottom side, which is greater than the 2 on Waffle's top side. Does that make sense? So they kind of see each other, and the bigger number um, wins. So for example, if I want to capture Macaron, I'm just going to go on the top. My 8 from my Caviar is going to be greater than my 3, and the, then the 3 on Macaron. And then um, the 5 is greater than the 4. And then the three, the five is greater than the four, and then they can't do anything, so we just stop there. All right, so pretty, pretty simple from pretzel. Very just get big cards, and then you're fine. So here's um, one of the four rewards, and then you can get duplicates, which convert to magic potions. This um, yellow card is going to be the rewards that you see on the screen, and then of course you get magic powder and obsidian also. So for example, you see all the rare rewards. Um, these would come up in your uh, yellow cards. So I already did all of them for pretzel. Cheese is actually the reverse. So we, we used to go to the highest one, but since you see the reverse rule, um, you want really low cards. So for example, I have a bunch of ones um, over here and I use my second deck to fight for cheese. Eggnog is where you have to actually start thinking. So um, I'm gonna use this one. It's kind of just easier to see, but there's a really interesting addition rule that you have to take care of. So the strategy I've been employing is that I want to create um, I want to basically set up the board to where I can use one major addition rule inside the game. So the NPC will almost always try to capture your card. So if you just set it up um, to where they're most likely to place a card, for example, I'm going to place my caviar here because it's a six. So they're probably going to place it in here to capture it, right? But now look, this card sees the center and this card also sees the center. So maybe I can place something there. Uh, I know I'm down like four cards right now, but if I can turn them over with the addition rule, they can turn back um, whatever card they're greater than as well. So let's see, we have a six and a five. So we need um, one number that is lower than by one on this side, one number that is higher by one on this side. So I'm going to go... Yeah, so I'm gonna go my oyster. So I'm looking at my Sanma, at the Sanma 6 and looking at the Rice's 5. Um, when they add up, they have to equal the same number for this addition rule to work. So I'm gonna put my oyster uh, there. And then, oh, they didn't flip this one. Oh, that's so weird. Okay, whatever. Maybe it's a bug. But do you see how the Sanma 6, um, the 6 plus the 6 is 12, the 7 plus the 5 is also 12. And so they would um, flip both of them. That's really interesting though how you didn't flip those. I'm wondering why they didn't. Anyway, let's just continue. They play there, I'm gonna play there. So might as well just play here. I don't, I think I'm gonna lose this game. Yeah, so 10 and 6, 10 and 4. Yeah, that's too big of a difference. But okay, basically the way you want to build this deck is that you want to have really close numbers. Um, because with the addition rule, it's not really about how big the numbers are. It's more about how well the 
numbers can make sums with the cards around them. Uh, and I don't want to use like really low numbers because then they'll just get overturned every single time. So it's about like getting that like, for example, like you can see how this one has a lot of variety, but they're all really close together so that they can use the addition rule very well. Casada is a really good um, piece for this. Um, you want to kind of stay away from cards with really high differences, um, like a pastel donata, um, because um, it's gonna be really hard to utilize them in battle for addition rules. Um, so sukiyaki is really good, um, salad is really good, um, you can try to utilize salty tofu. Um, and so trying to use those oyster for me has been really good because it has a double five and so if they have the same number it'll be really easy to capture. That's the way I've been building my addition deck. Um, for Kasata, you'll be doing a category buff. So basically, if they have all the same categories, you see how like here they have all have pumpkins in the middle. So that's going to be called the same category. And then every time they go into the battle, they'll add one per turn. Um, for here, they have a category debuff and reverse. So I would choose this one because they're all the same categories, but they'll all go down. It's pretty simple for those ones. Um, turkey is another one of those addition ones. So maybe I'll try that one later. Um, and then pizza really sucks because it's a shuffle. So you have to play by the order set by the system. For example, okay, let's try it again. You would have to play it um, in whatever order. So you, like you can't choose. So, but um, it is a category increase. So like, for example, you would increase by there. Um, you would increase by there. Very simple. So yeah, here it was pretty good. All right, cool donut. Teehee. Okay. And then finally croissant, it's going to be one over A and then iron order. So like in the way that your deck is built, for example, I have Sanma first, then caviar, it would have to play in that order. So you can try to alter that to for your best advantage. Since they have an ace killer, you might want like one or two cards with like a one on this one side. So for example, I would change to like a pecking just to have that one in your arsenal so that you can use it when they have an A. I think like croissant only has like one A card though. Oh, we get their Boston Lobster. Great. Spaghetti. Okay, let me just set myself up over here. Okay. Six and six. I'm gonna take both of them. But I think that wasn't. Oh, wow. He's really. Whoa. Okay. Um, nine and eight. Difference of one. Perfect. So, let's see, that four and the five is different. A one. Okay, and then I'm gonna go six and seven. Difference of one again. Oh, I can't do anything with that, though. Um, can I just brute force this one since I already have so much? Uh, I think I can. I think I'll just brute force it. Okay, yeah, we're good. I just have pretzels. So that was a pretty good example of what to do. And then if you keep going, um, you do have like 91, 100 tries um, to get turkey and souffle. When you're building your common decks, my deck unlock level is level 4, um, and you need to like collect a certain amount of cards to unlock them. And then once you do, you can only have one card that's above your level. Um, so that's level five or level six um, and then the rest of your cards can be at or below that level okay you can also create your own match so for example if i create a match i'll have a room card number and then i, I would send it to like dainty or gabe and then we could play together and then um we would press both press prepare choose our decks um and then we'd be like you know um, hurry up <laughs> something like that <laughs> nice play stuff like that okay so i hope this helped and then um there's some other events going on too like inkling of autumn we finally get toso and raindrop in the uh, perma pool um but nothing really much happening third annie will be coming up i don't know if i'll have time to make a video on that one and then fortunate encounter is just foul journey okay all right um is that it i think that's it uh so good luck have fun with the events um and i'll see you okay ciao oh wait we have to do this corgi i haven't been doing my legs very much 98 to 98 bro bro that was way too hard <laughs> that's what she said okay all right so good love good job corgi all right so i'll see you guys all later ciao